It's been over 30 years since DNA has been used in the courtroom and if you watch any crime scene show it's always the evidence that underpins a case but sometimes there are flaws. There's contamination issues, a degradation from how it's stored or how it's recovered and human error issues in the laboratory. So many experts have been trying to have a human free way of processing samples from a scene or a suspect. And it's a kind of magic box. It can quickly get information and then turn it around accurately. And one of those magic boxes is Andy and Lewis Shaw joins me to talk about the product. With taking a sample from a scene and getting it through all the administration process and then get it to the laboratory um, could take a various amount of time, uh, depending on what the actual case type was. Uh, if, if anything, the range could have been from uh, the 24 hour turnaround for something that's very urgent to a number of days, if not weeks, um, just depending on the capability of that force at the time. That, I mean, 24 hours obviously sounds, oh great, let's get it done, but it's still quite a long time if you want to rush something. Um, and you've been working recently with the new technology, uh, Andy, and that's to try and speed up this process. So the, the company Andy is based on rapid DNA technology. Um, and essentially rapid DNA is a ruggedized um, mobile instrument that can be operated by non-technical personnel uh, that provides a DNA profile in under two hours. Um, it's simply an instrument that is taken from the laboratory um, and that is field forward and ready for uh, frontline use in different industries. That sounds amazing. Um, and obviously taking this out, it sounds like it's going to be quite heavy. Uh, do you think that it, it's like it is quite heavy? Uh, so the instrument itself is only weighing 54 kilos. Um, it has two handles that are built on the side of the instrument uh, for two people to carry it. Um, it is uh, essentially a mobile platform, a mobile laboratory. Um, it's been designed with uh, the military and mil spec, 810 mil spec. Um, which is a ruggedization test so that it can be portable and is a mobile unit. I mean, that means that you can't drop it out of a helicopter, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, yeah, it's been tested to a meter of dropping um, and that it is operational after that meter, but definitely not out of a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when we go to a, when you go to a scene uh, with the, the Andy device, what are you finding? Is it, does it just find one type of uh, DNA? Um, does it just find, you know, is it a one use product? So Andy has been like undergone extensive lab and field testing uh, for multiple years um, through based in the US with like Department um, of Homeland Security through to the National Institute of Technology and Standards. Um, the FBI has uh, approved the instrument and through a various sets of sample types, uh, principally starting with reference samples, so a cheek sample from, from your mouth, a reference, um, but it has then had development validations uh, by not just us, but other labs worldwide on samples with blood, saliva, touch, uh, even muscle and bone in more DVI related situations. And obviously, um, you know, we were talking there about having a sample to put it against, but that doesn't necessarily always happen, especially, you know, in a case where you don't know have a suspect, but that doesn't mean that the device isn't used. You can put that DNA away for another time, is that correct? Yeah, so you might get to a situation at a scene where you have DNA around um, and that you can still sample that DNA and collect it in one of our uh, kind of smart swabs and keep that, keep that to one side. Um, but essentially that DNA might be able to rule out a witness or a victim more so than find a suspect allowing kind of a speedier, more efficient investigation. And I guess in, in a positive way there, it's also that, you know, you can close down a crime scene or in fact expand it to a wider area if you can get 
gets rid of or not get rid of but like you know focus down on certain areas so would you think that obviously this is now going from like 24 hours um potentially as you said longer and how long can this product develop the uh, sample test case and make sure that there's some victims and witnesses are all like clear so the and the uh, product itself is all designed around speed flexibility and control um, and our actual DNA profiling process can take under two hours uh, depending on the sample type so uh, you would have a reference sample from an, a victim a suspect uh, a witness uh, which can be processed in under two hours either ruling them out or actually including them in the investigation you might have a um, crime scene related sample that would be processed again in under two hours um, that could actually rule out again a person or actually include somebody that you didn't know before and that would be someone who's either against the reference profile you just took earlier or actually it could hit against a national database that's you know cut that down a crazy amount isn't it but what yeah. it sounds it sounds too good to be true though realistically to be honest you go to a crime scene and completely change it is like an episode of csi i mean is there any what are the other points to it there must be some kind of like negative like anything that people have you're still improving on for the future i think with andy as a whole we have an extensive team of uh, experts who have been in the field through military law enforcement, uh, government applications like uh, border control and prisons and uh, biometrics, that the constant innovation that's going on in Andy is, is really uh, surprising. Um, it's, it's a company and a product that's constantly working with the groups and fields that are uh, that the instruments designed for. Uh, you know the original uh, Andy and Net Bio, as it was previously called, um, uh, premise was to actually work with the military so that they had quicker uh, methods for DNA testing, and that's where we are. Have how we've got to where we are today. Um, I think the future is really exciting. I think that people uh, in all the aspects that we've spoken about um, want quicker DNA results. Um, I can't see why uh, people would want it to be slower. It just is, is an efficiency. Um, it allows to identify who is who um, and overall impact any investigation to save time and resources. One of the one of the big issues of even when you go to the lab and on the scene itself is cross contamination. Like that is something that can ruin you in court, can get get your suspect off, and you're now taking the laboratory to the scene. So how are you making sure that there isn't any cross contamination in? Because it's quite small, isn't it? Like the swabs are in the small section. So how are you making sure that there's no cross contamination there? So with Anything related to a scene, there are um, bodies like um, ISO accreditation that are constantly working to improve um, uh, the, the processing of the scene. Uh, ISO accreditation has been in laboratories for a number of years now, um, has worked very successfully. Um, the concept that taking our Andy instrument to a scene is just applying similar principles to a uh, at the various scenes that are available. Um, CSIs are very trained and uh, very knowledgeable on how to process scenes and how to be uh, DNA aware that it all it comes down to is um, implementation with those CSIs or those forces uh, or whatever use cases that you have with it. Um, I think there's an element of trust that we have in our police and CSIs uh, that this system will only enhance their work and hopefully improve their results. And it, it, you know, it does sound like it's going to be a lot easier to use and potentially moving away from the CSI and allowing police officers to do a, at the scene and maybe crime scene managers. Is that something that you <coughs> would want to look to? Yeah, I think a really important thing uh, from our perspective and my perspective is that the labs are still really useful. Um, we definitely don't want to take away the, the labs what we want to do is enhance uh, a police force or a law enforcement or um, a government body to actually be able to 
do DNA testing in the field, uh, the labs offer a perfectly and brilliant feedback and reachback system right now, um, in which all we want to do is enhance them and enhance investigations on the front line more. So is it up to five samples you can do at one time? Yeah, so essentially we have two chip types. We have a A chip, which is for a REST E, uh, so typically a reference sample, and that takes uh, for up to five uh, swab samples. Uh, and we then have a I chip, which is uh, classed as an investigative uh, chip type, which can take uh, up to four samples. Um, with the eye chip, those are the types of samples that are very varied. So the blood to saliva to touch, muscle and bone. Um, those are the two types that we have available at Andy. And if you had, um, say you had blood from one suspect and bone from potentially the victim, but you didn't know which, which you could, could you put it all into that, that device straight away and it separate them like that? Or does it have to be all one type of evidence in, in one section? So with the way the chips work is that each uh, swab sample that goes into each chamber of the cartridge on the eye chip, uh, they can be whatever variation. So you could have one blood, one touch, um, one saliva and one tissue sample all in that same chip. They all run on individual channels within the chip. So there's no cross crossover at all between any of those channels. So you can that allows you to run those four different types. Uh, with our reference profiles, we always keep them separate in a separate chip type, allowing you to run five of those. So obviously what it sounds like that if you can do this in such a short period of time, could we not go back to cold cases and uh, get through them much quicker? Yeah, there's definitely, again, different applications for it. And that's the beauty of it. It's taking DNA testing as we know today and uh, imagining where we want to put it next or where do we want to use it next. Um, cold cases is uh, a good example of just look, you know, looking back at, uh, uh, cases we haven't tested for are actually getting quick results from it. But, uh, you know, a good current example of more um, uh, of that use type is in uh, the US, where in Kentucky, they are now looking back at sexual assault cases that they've had stored for months, if not years, in their um, sexual assault evidence kits that are in the, their storage. And they're now testing that backlog with rapid DNA to to try and get results um, that, that the people have been waiting for, for for a long time. So it has has great potential to help reduce backlogs in, in many, many areas. It sounds like it, it's really get, going to be helpful more than just a backlog. It, those people giving them that peace of mind that actually a police yeah. force is doing something. Sometimes if it's been such a long time between a sexual assault and, you know, well nothing happening they could lose hope so this could also give people a bit of hope oh yeah absolutely um i think i think there are many examples uh in different countries uh and different organizations around the world where uh rapid dna could be incredibly useful uh, a system like Andes, which is the only one that's NDIS FBI accredited. Um, it has achieved an ISO accreditation. It's won a CES Innovation Award. Um, it's worked with militaries um, in Europe, within uh, Asia, uh, largely a huge, large following in uh, the US as well. Uh, this kind of technology has been used for DVIs with uh, helicopter crashes, wildfires, uh, even to the more uh, local DVIs, is what I would term it as, as, as crashes and trying to identify people uh, from burnt out vehicles. Um, some of the areas that it, worldwide that we're looking into is um, in police biometric databasing, uh, the Middle East uh, looking at population databasing, uh, prison and custody enrollments, and immigration and border work. Uh, there's there's so many uses with with technology moving in um, so fast that that this technology would hopefully slot into uh, different gaps for different countries.
With so many uses for rapid DNA profiling, such as exposing immigration fraud, comparing tissue samples of a burn victim to swabs taken from their home, all the way to linking an arrestee to unsolved crimes before they're let go. The list goes on and on. And it seems that the way we deal with DNA and any future collection is likely to change forever. Don't forget to subscribe to Bedroom Forensics where you can get all the updates on the products that are out there as well as getting some lessons about Forensics 101. See you soon.